Good evening and welcome to Inside Asia. This evening, we are going to have a very interesting conversation with a German judge, Dr. Hans Peter Kalt from the International Criminal Court. Dr. Kalt is presently taking part in an international conference here in Bangkok, jointly organized by Thammasat University, the German Embassy, and also the German Southeast Asia Center for Public Policy and Good Governance. He's going to tell us a challenging task facing the International Criminal Court and Thailand's potential involvement in this international organization. Your Honor, you are now taking part in an international conference in here in Bangkok, organized jointly by Thomas Art University, the German Embassy, and also the German Southeast Asia Center for Public Policy and Good Governance. Can you tell us about the thrust you know, of the conference and what's your message in this conference? Mr. Tanang, it's a great honor to be here in Thailand. Actually, I have been invited by Thammasat University and the uh, German Southeast Asian Center for Good Governance to this conference. It's a conference on human rights and the International Criminal Court. And I am particularly pleased to be here because this gives me the opportunity to explain this important treaty mm -hmm. to the listeners who are following this program. What's going to be your key message here? The key message in conformity with the title of the conference is that all must be done to protect the human rights of the people of the world, including the people of Thailand. I'm aware that uh, the protection of human rights plays a great role in Thailand of today. I'm also aware that Thailand has recently been elected mm. to the Human Rights uh, Commission of mm. the uh, United Nations in Geneva. Mm. The greatest threat for uh, human rights are armed conflicts, is war making. Mm. Yeah? Because we know from experience, and I allude, for example, to the Second World War, but not only to the Second World War, also to the Vietnam War, mm. or the war in Iraq, mm. or what happened in Cambodia. The greatest threat mm. uh, to human rights are uh, massive violations of the population mm. through in war. We need to, as uh, the world, since uh, 1945, since the Declaration of Human Rights in the United Nations, is agreed that we have to protect the human rights mm. of the entire population of all countries in mm. the world. Mm. How do you see the uh, situation of human rights now uh, moving? Do you think that it's better now compared to the past? I think that we have made indeed enormous progress since the Second World War. Mm. As I said before, we had in 1948 the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. By the way, I'm not sure that all Thai people know this, Thailand was one of the countries mm. who adopted this, this, this declaration of, of human rights. Mm. Later on, we have had a number of important uh, treaties. Mm. We have had the civil pacts on civil and political rights. And we have had the Geneva Conventions mm. on International Humanitarian Law, ensuring the protection of civilians, in particular in conflicts. Mm. And there are a number of bodies. Mm. And one important instrument which has come to the forefront in the 20 past last years mm. Um, are international criminal courts. Mm. The first one was the uh, International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia mm. set up in 1993. Mm. Then we have had the genocide in mm. Rwanda. Mm. In Rwanda, uh, all of a sudden, 800,000 Hutu people were killed. Mm. So this led to another criminal court. Mm. And since 1998, we have this important treaty, mm. the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court, mm. and Thailand can be proud that Thailand was one of the states 
which elaborated this treaty. I myself was the German head of delegation in mm. Rome and we had excellent relations with the Thai delegation mm. and I hope that I will be able to meet here in Bangkok mm -hmm. some of my colleagues mm. that were together with me in Rome. Mm. And this treaty is the first treaty which sets up a permanent court. This court will mm -hmm. stay forever, mm -hmm. if you may say so. It's a general court, yeah? It's a future-oriented court. It was not created after crimes had committed. It's for future crimes mm -hmm. or to prevent future crimes. Mm -hmm. And that is the importance of this court. Thailand has signed this treaty but the process is still going on for, for us to become a, a full member. Yes, Thailand has signed this treaty in the year 2000, and of course all the states parties who are members of this uh, court would like to see Thailand to become a member of this court. To sign a treaty is, so to speak, the announcement that one has the intention to sign a treaty. Of course, this is a decision that Thailand has to take for alone and in full sovereignty. The Thai people, the Thai government are the only ones who can make this decisive uh, step. Mm. But we hope that will be done one day. Mm. What are some of the most important benefits you know, for, for Thailand you know, to join this Rome Treaty to support the ongoing process yeah. you know, of the, the International Criminal Court. Yeah, the benefit is, uh, is uh, that Thailand would commit itself to strengthen the rule of law, mm. both internally mm. and on the international uh, level. Mm. When uh, you are, are joining uh, a, a human rights treaty, and this treaty again is an important treaty to protect human rights. Mm -hmm. The benefit is that you give more weight and more importance to the human rights of the population concerned and that you declare for yourself mm -hmm. uh, that you want uh, to do everything to strengthen the rule of law. Mm -hmm. And as we know, the rule of law is the friend of human rights mm. and absence of the rule of law mm. creates a climate in which the human rights of many people are easily mm. violated. Mm. That is a benefit. Okay. Do you get support from the major superpower countries? We have two permanent members of the Security Council who are members of the treaty, mm. namely the United Kingdom and France. With regard to the US, the story is complicated mm. because during the Clinton administration, the United States uh, took part in the elaboration of this treaty and mm. actually many of the provisions mm. that can be found in this treaty are American uh, proposals. Mm. And we had hoped that they also signed the mm. treaty. Mm. But then came George W. Bush, mm. yes, mm. and he had a different concept. And actually, they rejected the court, they criticized it very harshly, mm. they, they said, that this court is an instrument for politically motivated prosecutions mm. against... Was that because of the war in Afghanistan and Iraq? You cannot look into the head of the people there, but anyway, they all steps to undermine, if not to sabotage, our, our court. Mm. And what is worse, they went around, and probably they did the same in Bangkok, they went around to nations who wanted to become a member and said, if you do this, maybe your prime minister will not be allowed anymore to visit Washington. Mm. But since the arrival of mm. President Obama, mm. we are in a totally different ball game. Mm. And now so the, the political wind has changed. The political wind has totally changed. The American officials are visiting our court quite often, but they cannot uh, become a member because they do not have the, the necessary two-thirds majority in the Senate, which mm. is a constitutional requirement. Mm. Let's quickly talk about China. Mm. China is important, mm. yes. Mm. And I have been invited to Beijing already in 2003 by mm. the Chinese government. Mm. 
they take for the time being a wait and see attitude. I see. A wait and see attitude, they say, we will uh, see whether this court develops to an institution that we, that we can uh, mm. support. Mm. And, but they are attending our meetings. Uh, I'm on, in, in the best possible relationship with the Chinese ambassador mm. in The Hague. I hope to be invited soon again to mm. China. Mm. With regard to the Russians, which, mm. which are the last ones, mm. there's a lot of support. Mm. Um, in, in How about the European Union? The European Union now, all member states are members of the ICC. But that's an important point. It's not a European court. Our largest membership uh, group comes from Africa. In Asia, mm. we have uh, important states like Japan and Korea, uh, and we have Cambodia, a direct neighbor of mm. Thailand. And well, let's see, we hope that Thailand may become a member. Mm. Can you tell us about some of the highlights or the prominent cases that the International Criminal Court has been handling so far? Yes. The first point that I would like uh, to make is uh, that the court, uh, which is a complex court, uh, will deal only with leadership crimes. Mm. Leadership crimes. Okay. You go after the big fish, not uh, the small fish. That, that's the right expression. Mm. We go after the, the big fish, those who give the orders not the captains and the small uh, soldiers on the ground mm. who do the bloody uh, job. Mm. Yeah? We are now following and investigating uh, massive crimes uh, committed in South Sudan, mm. which may become independent state. Mm. We are following the situation in Uganda, where in the north, uh, some years ago, there was a wave of terror demanding the life of mm. 20,000 or more people. Mm. And we are looking into crimes committed in the Democratic Republic of Congo and also in the Central African Republic and Kenya. Mm. In Kenya, that's the case which my chamber is dealing, uh, was uh, put on our table by Kofi Annan. Mm. Kofi Annan, after the election violence 2007 and 2008, mm. he came to our prosecutor and he said, I now have here a list, he gave us a closed envelope, with 21 main suspects, mm. you, mm. the International Criminal Court, should look into this. Mm. And the prosecutor has recently submitted an application mm. regarding six suspects, mm. and my chamber has to, be, to decide mm. whether the uh, first vice president mm. of Kenya, mm. Uhuru Kenyatta, and two other cabinet ministers, and three high-ranking other politicians and mm. leaders, whether they have belong and shall be held accountable before our court. Mm. I see. The, the resource question. Yeah. Do you have resources you know, to undertake uh, this uh, task? Yes, um, we have resources. Our budget, our annual budget, is currently around 100 million uh, euro. Mm. This may uh, sound much. At the same time, you should not forget that we are in principle um, uh, responsible for crimes committed in all over the globe. Mm -hmm. So we are a small institution mm -hmm. compared with the evil and the catastrophes of the crime. Mm -hmm.